Hey everybody, it's Gil with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and if you're not familiar with our channel, that beauty right there is our classic 51-foot Formosa sailboat. My wife and I do videos every single week about our lifestyle living aboard and refitting our boat. For three years we lived aboard, and for the last year we've basically been doing a, an extensive refit. We moved off the boat and we really brought it into a yard and just did a tremendous amount of work to her. Uh, if you want, I'll put a link right up here in this upper right-hand corner so you can binge watch some of the refit videos and you can get a little bit familiar with the work we've done to date. The reason I bring this up is we're really excited. We thought this weekend was the weekend we'd be able to sail her back home and you know, still continue doing some work on the inside, but she would be ready to use. We would be able to enjoy her uh, in, in a way to you know, take off on weekends or whatever we wanted to do while we finish up the rest of the, the work we want to do to eventually go cruising. Unfortunately, there's still a little bit more work to be done. Um, I'll kind of show you what we have, but the stainless fabricator still working on two stainless plates on the bow pulpit. And I noticed in some of the touch-up paint work that was done um, over the last couple of days, it needs to still be touched up and fared in a little bit where they did the touch-up versus the older paint that's been on it now for a few months. So I've put a lot of pressure on, on the boat yard to try and hurry up these last couple of weeks, mainly just because there is a boat show that we entered uh, that's a week and a half away. And we were hoping to have the boat entered in that boat show. Um, it kind of left me either this weekend or next weekend to sail it back home. I wanted to do it this weekend in the event I, I needed a little bit of extra time. Unfortunately, it probably won't be the case. I may have to settle on doing that next weekend, but uh, but that's kind of where we're at. And probably even this video, or maybe even in the next one, depending on whether or not it ends up still being just a couple days away, we will pull out of this dock for the first time in 11 months and head on out again uh, on the boat, which uh, I can't wait. I just can't wait. So I'm going to head over to her. <laughs> Ironically enough, that boat is in the way and I can't even walk around it. It is a big old boat. So let's head around here. All right, let's squeeze head through there. Oh, uh, duck walk underneath the edge. Stand on up. All right, so let me show you the section. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mold something here. You see how these four screws are? I and mean, two of them are in and the other two just have holes in them. But you can see the challenge. If I put a backing plate on it, one of those washers like you see on the top, the bottom side, it is right on that ridge. So essentially I need to make a plug that will make that all level. So I'm gonna go use some modeling clay to get that exact shape down. And then I'm going to essentially pour epoxy into a small tube on that modeling clay that's the same size as the washer. That should give me sort of a plug, if you will, that I can put behind the washer. So the washer will sit on a flat surface and it'll be tied up against the entire uh, hull there. All right, so as you can see here, um, I basically took each of these plugs and I got the washer on the back side of it. That's how I know what size it is. And you can see the dot there. I pushed this up against the side of the boat. So essentially, this plug would sit just like this. And that ridge, you can see where the line would be on that ridge, right? So I'm going to essentially put a piece of um, uh, foil down inside of this and some tape around it. And then I'm going to pour the epoxy down inside of that. And we're going to hope that's going to do it. All right, so I've got my pieces here. I'm just going to sort of smooth this out a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect because I am going to have butyl tape on the inside of this as well, but it gives me a good idea of how it's going to work. I'm going to do the same thing over here. There's a way to mark where this hole is going to go. I think I'm going to uh, use a, just a small wooden skewer. So I kind of have my mold in here and we'll be able to shape this a little bit in there. Okay, 
these two are going to be ready to go. I'm going to go mix up some epoxy and come back here and pour it in. All right, I've mixed up some epoxy with a little bit of pigment and a little bit of thickening agent, not much. You can see a little bit spilled out of this one. I don't really know if that's going to work. It seems like it might, so we'll give it a shot and say in about 30 minutes. I ran the engine for about an hour and a half or so while I cleaned the boat, I cleaned the deck, I reassembled the galley seats and you know, put all the hardware back on the butterfly hatch. So I got a little bit of stuff done. Um, let me check out these two epoxy plugs. They should be starting to harden up. Let's see what they look like. Not quite hard yet, so I'm just going to set these aside so they don't get messed up. Got to find a good place to put them where they're out of the way. Tuck them right down under here. That should be fine for now. And we'll check them out later. All right, so I got those sitting there drying and uh, I'll be back later. Well, good Sunday morning. So today is gonna be a pots and pans day. There's a bunch of little stuff I gotta get done. I wanna put the sails on. Um, I wanna put some screws down on the guards that go over the top of the glass for the butterfly hatch. Uh, I want to connect the anchor snubber line. I want to install the anchor. I'm bringing some line on board for um, the stern anchor uh, before our trip. So it's just a lot of little pots and pans things, but things I need to ultimately get done. So let's first start by checking those plugs that I made yesterday. Um, sometime in the middle of the night, it sort of dawned on me that I think I made them wrong. If you recall, yesterday I took that modeling clay and I made the shape of what I ultimately needed. Um, and then I turned that upside down and I poured epoxy on top of it to create the opposite form of that mold. I think what I just did was I created a positive impression of what I need as opposed to the negative impression. So now what I may need to do is clean these up. I'm going to check them for fit to make sure they truly are a good negative of what I need. And then I believe I'm going to have to actually coat the inside of these epoxy plugs and use it as a mold now to make the positive piece that I actually need. A little backwards, but I think that's what I'm going to have to do. So the good news is it's not wasted time. Frankly, I needed to do this. I could have made it out of something other than uh, the, than epoxy, but at least I get to practice my uh, my methodology. So I'm going to start by cleaning those up and checking it out. Hello. That's all he says. That's all he says? What is that? Can you tell everybody? Um, a wish me puppy. A wish me puppy. You touch noses and he lights up and squeals, right? Ah, oh, that's cute. So let's check out the molds we have. And if you remember yesterday, we had these molds kind of like this, right? And I started to take one apart where I leaked out a little bit. It got on the, on the wood and I had to break that loose. But now I'm basically just going to tear this tape off of here and see what we got. And if you caught what I just said a minute ago, I, I believe I kind of goofed up. This is essentially the, pl the, the, the clay was the shape of what I actually need as opposed to the opposite of the shape I need. So I think I goofed up a little bit in that area. Now I'm going to probably use the sander to clean this up because some of the tape is behind a piece of this here where it leaked out. But let's get this removed at least as best we can. You start to see what we have here, and again, this is the the Play-Doh, right? The, the the I keep saying Play-Doh because the little ones around, but the modeling clay is the negative. I'm sorry, the positive of what we actually need, which means I probably have this as a mirror image of what I need. But let's, let's see what we got here. I'll take my washers out. We'll use those again, and I'm using this little stick here just to clean up some of the modeling clay out of there. Yes, ma'am. You got a blood potty bed? All right, let's go it real quick. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the belt sander real quick, and I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. Um, as you can see, I had a lot of bleed out here, so I need to sort of sand this up to where the tape is. Um, actually, that's yeah, good. I was able to break some of it off, so that's good. So we're going to head over to the little belt sander real quick and just touch these up and then we'll go dry fit them and see how well they work. And then I'll probably have to make a new mold and pour a new one.
Say hi, McKinley. Got my little helper right here behind me. Say hi. All right, so here's what we've got, and you can kind of see the shapes of them here. All right, we're going to go on the boat and try and dry fit these and see how it works. It's going. All right, and I've now poured oh, no. my positive mold instead of my negative one, so we'll see how this looks. All right, so we're down on the boat. I got Swab down here, got the life jacket off. It's nice having the floorboards in here. I'm not as worried she can run around out here and she's having a good time. She found one of her My Little Ponies from before the boat was in the yard, so she's excited. Um, but in prep for the trip, um, I had a battery that I had down here. It's a good deep cycle battery uh, and, I, and it's probably dead just from sitting here so long. So I went ahead and picked up another charger today, uh, mainly just because I, I, it'd be good to have an extra one. Right now, the battery bank for the windlass and the um, uh, windlass and the bow thruster is not connected to our battery charger. So I've got work to do on the whole battery and electrical system. So in the short term, this is something I can do to charge it. And I did get one that's a boost. It'll do up to 100 amp boost for cold cranking on engine. Uh, so I went ahead and got probably a little more than I need for this little task, but at least it's, uh, it's something I can use. So I'm about to connect this thing up and see how well we go. So I've got my battery charger connected here. You can see here it's uh, it's recognized it's 12 volt battery. It's on auto mode. It's putting 30 amps of uh, bulk absorption into it right now. And um, yeah, this is a good Optima deep cycle and starting battery. Um, it's great backup battery. I actually had it as a secondary battery in the Tahoe, but uh, I just put it in here to carry as a spare in the event I needed an extra boost for starting motor or the bow thrust or the windlass or if anything else seemed to have an issue. So. Once this one shows fully charged, I'm going to leave this charger overnight on the uh, on the bow thruster battery. All right, I'm going to take an intermission coming to you from the car. If you're not familiar with our channel, my wife and I do videos every single week about our lifestyle, living aboard, and refitting our classic sailboat. If that's the type of content you think you might enjoy, by all means, give us a thumbs up and a like, and click subscribe so you don't miss any of our future videos. I got Swab helping out here. We've walked on the deck and got it dirty, and she's cleaning up, aren't you, Swabby? All right, so I did a little bit of work back here and kind of took this whole helm station apart, checked all the electrical in here. I am going to have to pick up a couple of new switches. Uh, I'm going to have one of these for the spreader lights back here and another one for um, the secondary anchor light. And I think I'm going to leave it up here as a bit of an emergency item. Uh, so I'll switch it in. I'll, I'll, I'll wire it in here instead of down below. Um, yeah, so I think we're in decent shape. I've, I'm ready to at least get a temporary VHF set up out here just for the trip. Um, I say temporary just because I want to redo this helm station. So temporary might be a year, but it'll be fine. And then I, I laid out the wires going all the way up the deck to see what I've got to run up the mast. Uh, I definitely have to run the GPS antenna up and also the radar wire. So those are the two things I need to connect up. I, I got to actually pull them up the mast. The other ones come down. So, All right. So before I run over to West Marine, I think I'm going to go ahead and put the mizzen sail on just to see if I have all the parts I need for that. I think I do, but let me just check because I might actually need a clevis pin to hold the uh, foot of the sail down. I don't know. So let me check that out. Well, the weather started to get a little bit rough, so I decided to um, I decided to go ahead and, and hold off on putting the mizzen up. I did go ahead and rig the halyard and the outhaul uh, and got all that stuff ready to go, but I didn't actually put the sail on. Um, so let's see, we got that done. We got a Baja fuel filter, didn't we, at West Marine? Yeah, we got that done. And I'm about to put the ladder on the boat and also the anchor um, stern line, the stern anchor line, just to have it here on the boat. The other thing I did was I went ahead and wired up the VHF. This probably isn't its permanent location, but it'll stay here for at least a year or so. So I went ahead and wired that up outside. Oddly enough, I'm not getting an AIS signal, and I'm not, naturally, not sure why yet. Now, I don't have my GPS antenna hooked up, so maybe it requires a GPS antenna to start to display them. I don't know. So I, uh, I at least tested my VHF. That worked. So I'll, I'll go ahead and get that part of it um, shown here to you. I put two new switches back at the helm station. One is for a backup anchor light, and the other one is for my spreader light. So I'll show you what those look like as well. The nice thing is we got our VHF connected. So. Now that. Right back to 16. Yeah, looks good. I'll power it down. That's nice. And then um, I did go ahead and put these two switches right here too. So first one, 
Nice big spreader lights up there, I love it. And I got my secondary anchor light, which you probably won't better see from here. So that's nice. And then I also wired in, um, when the lights are on for the dash, the actual uh, compass lights up as well. So I've got my good Richie here, and that lights up as well. I'm also charging the battery, so nope, right between the two green lights. Go ahead and push that big round red button. Yep. All right, come on over here now. Perfect. Thank you. So it was pretty dead. It's sitting at 9.4 volts right now, and it's still putting 30 amps into it. That's the, uh, and it was sitting at 8.9 when I first did it. So I don't know. We'll see if the battery comes back. If not, I'll have to get a new one. Ooh, wow. So every day when I run to Starbucks, I get those silly little um, plugger stopper things that go in the cup to keep it from spilling in the car. Then when I get done, I, I stick it down in my center console, and uh, and I had like five of them in there today. And McKinley's like, oh, I want to play with these. We can make a snake. You can, you can glue them together. I said, well, I'm going to be mixing up some epoxy. We can epoxy it. So... She reminded me that we need to make sure we, we epoxy it before we leave. So look at this. I don't know how well you can see it, but there's a whole train of them. There's six of them all epoxy together. So I'll let them dry. And so we wrapped up for the day. Um, yeah, we're done. It was a long day. I mean, we, we got down there at 9 o'clock. We've been down there all day. So we're going to go grab a bite to eat, and I let McKinley pick. Where did you decide to go to dinner? CeCe's. CeCe's Pizza Buffet? <laughs> you like CeCe's? No. That's that one. Yeah, CeCe's Pizza Buffet. Buffet means all the pizza you can eat. Oh. What's your favorite kind of pizza? Pepperoni and sausage. Pepperoni and sausage together? What and about? And bread. Oh, and you like the cheesy bread? Mm -hmm. And do you like the, the little dessert pizzas? Yes. Yes, the apple pie one? Yes. Yeah. Wait, they don't have that? They do. You want to try it? It's called apple strudel. They also have the little chocolate brownies. You like those too, don't you? Well, you if want to I tell? Eat all of, if I eat so fast, your stomach will hurt. Yep. That's what that just happened right now. Right now? You what'd you eat so fast? Oh, you eat the rest of your morning bun from this morning? So fast. Do you want to say goodbye to everybody? Bye! Safe sailings and following seas. Safe sailings. And a following sea. See you guys. Pretty good, huh? Off. Um. Well, that's gonna be all for this week's video. Next week, we finish cleaning the boat and we sail her home. I know we're gonna get it done next weekend. Bye, y'all.